Hello, I am David Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. I am here to talk about critical thinking specifically today and what critical thinkers do compared to mainstream think thinkers or what I call intellectuals. Intellectuals basically as uh, a recent video of one of the great critical thinkers uh, um, the mock in, go to the mock in, it's down right down here. I put all the lists, the mock in, he talks about parroting. And who is that? Dr. Alexander Unziger, a great uh, critical thinker in Europe who takes on the physics, particle physics community head on and he was talking about we basically pair each other and that's what we try to try to do to impress people we don't we don't do critical thinking that, that's too hard and that would go against people and we are our social our social constructs as human beings don't allow us to go against the grain because we'll feel like people will mistreat us and call us crazy but we don't care about that because we are in search of truth just like one of my uh, real favorite uh, critical thinkers James Grist and I'm going to show you a real critical thinker at work. I really like him. If you don't remember who he is, well, um, take a look at this video. Maybe you'll remember it if you've been following me. If not, go back and take a look in the Expansion Tectonics playlist and you'll see this video. And this video is great because it's basically a three-dimensional model where you have little balls and you just add, keep a little, adding little balls to the center of the sphere and it will grow automatically because it's got physics um, uh, sort of physics calculations in it. And basically you can see how an expansion, expanding planet would look like. In this case we did some color coding to make it look like uh, the, the surface of the earth which cracked up about 20, 220 million years ago and then uh, started the ocean started to form and this simulation software which I believe is now uh, open source is really great. So that's the guy I'm talking about. He just came out with this article and my goodness he demonstrates what a true critical thinker is. What do they do? There's basically three things true critical thinkers do. Number one, they're not afraid to take on the mainstream and say it's wrong. Number two, they're not afraid to criticize themselves even with new of their new ideas or with their thought process. And number three, if you're a real critical thinker, and I'm talking about right out there, one of the best, you actually will publish your processes of thinking knowing that you're going to be wrong because you're in a process of doing this and you are trying to help and show people your 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 way of thinking this couldn't be better reading james grist is is a a study in critical thinking and here's a really really great article he just came up with and that is a pacific and earth age and growing estimates he's trying to use calculations to find out the rate of growth of of the earth and he had first calculated at 40 40 millimeters a year so um is he did that and he even gives you a link to uh, his article an easy method for estimating the earth's radial growth and he goes and he and he takes a look at all the stuff and he 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 you can read this and he came to the conclusion that it was around 40 millimeters a year which didn't jive with some of the best people in in um, expansion tectonics but it turns out that he has now changed his mind because he did some recalculating and he found out after some calculations I realized that 40 millimeters a year is too much oh my goodness he is not a scientist he can't make up his mind oh he's changed his mind he starts out with one thing he's just an amateur he's just flailing around no he's a critical thinker and it's gonna lead him to great places because that's how the world of science changes and, and, and evolves and also advances. This is how you advance science. So you can see that, oops, there was a wrong assumption he talks about. Again, assumptions are very important. What are you assuming in when you are talking about things? We don't hear assumptions ever, especially in particle physics, ever. So that's so, uh oh, conventional model. He's like, I'm not really happy because I'm getting a 30 millimeters a year. That's more like a conventional model for, uh, but they don't think the Earth's expanding. The specific numbers are hard to fit to a growing Earth model. Of course, you know, uh, we know that the Earth is not expanding equally 
It's not like just going equally all around. What's happened is it basically opened up like this, and then it opened up like this. I have a video of James Maxwell doing this, and I'm going to make a whole video on that because it's just worth it. But of course, it's not expanding uniformly, so you're going to get that. And the Pacific spread is, is much lower than 150 millimeters a year. Uh, the reason they have that is because they have subduction. Um, I believe if I search for subduction here, subduction, there it is. It says, because normally the Atlantic spread it doesn't have any subduction. That's what they say. Let's see, is there a subduction again he talks about? He says, but in more importantly, the conventional model of the Pacific has subduction zones, which is true. That's what they say. And they talk about the subduction rate. He talks about that. Of course, he also said, if we discard their subduction myth, critical thinker, yes. Is there subduction? Probably a little bit. But it's really more, as James Maxwell says, it's our interpretation of it. And there are people that will die saying there's subduction and there, that we have this diving of the crust into the mantle. So you can see that as a critical thinker, he does talk about it. He looks at the conventional wisdom. He looks at what they say. Critical thinker all the way. James Grist, you are one of my heroes in critical thinking. Goes on estimating the rate of growth of the Earth. Now, what's really interesting from that, he gets that the radial growth is 18 to 19 millimeters a year. This is roughly the same as the estimates from the growing Earth as, as such theorists, theorists as such as Maxwell, Koziar, and Belivnov. Now, we know that Maxwell is probably the expansion tectonist alive today. So that's pretty interesting. So he's coming to the conclusion now. In the beginning, he, he's an expansionist, and he didn't believe it. There you go. What I say, don't believe anything anyone says on faith. You do, you know, stay critical, stay thinking. That's what he did. And in fact, he then goes on and he's estimating the age of the earth. Oh my gosh, he's estimating at 4 million years old. No, 400 million years old to 1.5 billion years. Oh, he's wrong. He is showing you his thought process and his calculations. He's not wrong. He's showing you this train of thought, this train of calculations. Is he right or wrong? Were we around 1.5 uh, billion years ago? No. Well, we have rocks. That, yes, I've read about how to date rocks and all that stuff. And yes, it looks like the Earth's a lot older than we think it, th than that. But he is not saying that. He's saying from these calculations, that's what it is. And of course, he does make a link at the very top of his, his uh, article here. If you go back to his, whoops, going wrong and around and around. If you go to this comment, it's the Pacific Age and Growth Estimates. He does put there the reasonable argument of constant rate of growth. The, um, that kind of, those kind of uh, articles are mentioned. And of course, he talks about an exponential growth that is, this is a chart from James Maxwell, and of course James Maxwell said, here's the earth uh, when the crust started to crack up, and look at this growth, it is exponential. So he's using these calculations to say, okay, from this logic, I'm getting this. We have Ray Gallucci, who is another person who does this kind of thing. He shows his process. He's going to take somebody's idea and do some calculations with it, right or wrong. And he does that all the time. He loves doing that. In fact, he just he's prolific at that. And that's what this uh, James Christ is. Those are two of uh, my favorite scientists, Ray Galucci. Uh, take a look at at the CNPS, uh, that's naturalphilosophy.org in our organization. So he comes, again, he comes up with this idea that it's this old, but probably will come up with something different in the future because he's a critical thinking thinker always changing. And remember what I said, don't take my word on this. If you don't believe in expansion tectonics, go read up on it. Go read on the data. When I look at it, when I look at the evidence for it, it's overwhelming. And just because we don't have a mechanism yet, and we have people do working on mechanisms and thinking about a mechanism for why the earth is gaining mass and other bodies are gaining mass, doesn't mean that the Earth can't then expand. Just because we don't have a mechanism for it, we can ex we use lasers all the time. Lasers we can't use lasers because we can't explain why light stays in a in a beam. We can't. Mainstream science can't explain that. We still use it. We use double standards because our emotions get in the way. Oh, I don't want to look like a crackpot. Oh, we can't we can't admit we're wrong. We can't admit we don't know anything. But that's what critical thinkers do. Again, applause to our critical thinker of the day, that is James Grist. Thank you so much. 
for your work and revealing to other people how critical thinkers think. And remember what I said, don't take my word for it. Don't take what I say on faith or anybody else what they say on faith. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilster. I am your science therapist. Ciao for now. Hey, this is David Hilser. Be sure to check out the other YouTube channels of the Critical Thinkers. My father, the Particle Guru, he's got some great videos there where he talks about why you don't need, for instance, dark matter. And we have the king of special relativity, the Critical Thinker, the guy, and that's the nick of time. You want to check him out right here? You can see him right there. Click on them, subscribe to them. You won't regret it. You, these guys are great, and they will make you think.